Hey everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. We have another huge release coming out right around the corner on June 11th. It is the second installment of Topps Flagship Series 2021 Topps Series 2. And the question on all collectors' minds is who are the rookies I'm going to be chasing? What are the short prints? What are the autos I can go after? And how good is is this set really going to be? Well, we're going to dig in right now because it is time to do the One Cent Sports Cards 2021 Top Series 2 Set Guide and Review. It's hard to believe that we're already over two months into the baseball season, and as such, we have Topps Series 2 coming out, the second installment of Topps' flagship series. So how good is this set, really? Well, we're going to use the exclusive one-cent sensational set ranking to find out. What is that, you ask? Well, let me explain it. First of all, this is going to be the most in-depth ranking system you're going to find anywhere on the internet for 2021 Top Series 2. Here's what we do. I take the set, break it down into 10 different categories, and each one of those categories is worth 1 to 10 points. Those categories are everything from the auto checklist to card quality to the relics to the variations, you name it. We're going to cover off on it. We've got 10 different categories. What we do is we take all of those categories and add up all the points in each of those categories and give the set a one to five star rating based upon the rating system that you see on the left. And then what we'll do is we'll compare the 2021 Top Series 2 set with the 2020 set that came out last year to see if the set is better this year than it is last year. And we'll compare 2021 Top Series 2 to all of the other 2021 sets that have released so far in this baseball card collecting season. So one more thing before we begin. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button if you like these videos, if you like these reviews. It's the best way that you can show support for the channel. And be sure to subscribe if you like these reviews. We do them for all of the major releases. And if you want to be the first person to view them, be sure to hit the bell. And know as much as you need to know about the set before you buy into breaks, go out to the LCS, whatever it is you want to do. So let's dig right in. We've got Top Series 2, a ton to get into here, a big release. First thing we're going to do, we'll cover off on the set highlights. I'm going to tell you all the different buying formats that you can get the, this set in. I'm going to cover off on what the key cards are. We'll even dig into the parallels, the inserts, the relics, the autos. There's a ton of them in this set. And I'll even tell you which teams I think you should be targeting in breaks. Give you a couple sleepers, who I think the most valuable team is, the team with the most autos. So stay tuned for that. And then on top of that, I'm going to tell you what the overall set positives are, what some of the negatives are, so you can be really informed when you go out and make your purchasing decisions. And that's what brings us to the one cent sensational set ranking, where we will find out how good this set really is. And then I'll share with you all of the set rankings from 2021's baseball card collecting season so we can see how it stacks up to all of the other sets that have been released so far this year. Let's dig in. First of all, you need to know that we are in the 70th year of Tops being produced. So it is this is Tops' flagship release. It is the second in a three-part series. Series one came out way back in February. Now we have series two, and in a few months we'll get the update series. For series two, we have another 330 card base set checklist. The cards will be numbered 331 through 660 because it's an add on to series one. In 2020, there were 350 cards. So we've shaved about 20 cards off of the set this year. It, like I said, it is in its 70th year of production. It started way back in 1951, and that 70th anniversary is celebrated all throughout the set. Top Series 2 also has a 16 color base set checklist parallel rainbow that covers off on things like the Walmart blues, all sorts of different things like that. Uh, we have 
59 different rookie cards available in the set. A ton of different rookie cards. Are they all good? We're going to find out. There are three new insert sets that were introduced for Series 2 that were not in Series 1. And that 1986 Tops design is again used heavily in the relics and the inserts and the autos. We'll cover off on that here in a little bit. And there are 25 more of the unique Tops Experience tickets that are available. It's almost like a Willy Wonka ticket if you pull one of those. It's available in plenty of hobby and retail formats. If you are looking for Series 2, I believe it's not going to be that hard to find at the LCS. It will be hard to find at Target, though. And finally, the silver packs are available in hobby boxes and jumbo hobby boxes again. And we also have the short prints, the super short prints, and the SSSSSSSSSPs are going to be available just like they were in Series 1. So, let's cover off on the buying formats. We'll start off with hobby. First thing you can get is a jumbo box. There's going to be 10 packs in each box, 46 cards per pack. So, that's going to get you... 480, no, that's 460 actually, 460 total cards. The cost on those are about 235 right now. So your cost per card, just under 50 cents at 49 cents. You are guaranteed to get one auto, two relics, two silver packs, five gold foil parallels, which are exclusive to the jumbo format, and one chrome 70 years of tops pack. There's going to be two cards in that pack. You can also get a hobby box. The hobby box is going to have 24 packs in the box, 14 cards per pack, for a total of 336 cards. The cost on those is about 135 right now, so your cost per card comes down to 40 cents. You are guaranteed one auto or relic, one silver pack, and you are also guaranteed to get two rainbow foil parallels. We also have retail buying formats. So let's start off with those. First, you can get a retail box. That is very much like a hobby box. That's going to be 24 packs per box, 16 cards per pack. So 384 total cards. Cost is about 100 bucks on that. So your cost per card around 26 cents. But you aren't guaranteed to get any autos or relics. But you are guaranteed to get 24 inserts. There's also the blaster box. That's going to have seven packs per box, 14 cards per pack, so 98 total cards. Cost is about 20 bucks, 21 bucks. So your cost per card on that at 21 cents, you are guaranteed to get one relic and seven inserts. Then you have your hanger box. That's going to have 67 cards with a current price of about 12 bucks. Cost per card, 18 cents, and you will be guaranteed to get two of the retail inserts. You can also get a fat pack. That's going to have 40 cards per pack, seven bucks. Cost per card is 18 cents. That is your lowest cost per card that you will get out of any of the buying formats. And there's also individual gravity feed packs that will be available. And of course, additional formats are likely based upon the different retail locations. So we may see some tins. We may see mega boxes, stuff like that. Um, you may see some special things at Meyer that you don't see at Walmart. So you'll see a few other ones out there in the wild. So what are the key cards for 2021 Top Series 2? Well, first, let's cover off on the rookies. Very important in a set like this, in a flagship set. The key rookies for Top Series 2 are going to be Shirt and Apostle. Uh, we got Jake Cronenworth, one of my favorite rookies of the 2021 class. We got Ha Sung Kim. We have Alex Kirilov. We have Jami Jones, which I was surprised to see in the set. Glad he's in there. Adonis Medina. And then we have Jazz Chisholm. He's been playing good for the Marlins this year. Luis Garcia. Cabrian Hayes, who just came back off the DL. And, of course, Sam Huff down there in Texas. We have Dalton Jeffries rounding out the key rookies that you can find in Series 2. For our parallels, autos, inserts, relics, stuff like that. First of all, we have the 70 years of Topps baseball inserts. Um, those have been carried on from Top Series 1 into Top Series 2. And then we have the 2021 Rookie card patch and autos. That's actually a manufactured relic, but I believe they're going to be pretty popular because it has that 
iconic RC logo on them. You're only going to find those in Hobby and Jumbo boxes. And then some very cool cards, the shaped sketch cards available in Hobby and Jumbo boxes as well. There is a large checklist of cut signatures. We'll cover off on that here in a little bit, but some huge pulls that you can get there. And then, of course, the always popular Silver Pack Mojo refractors that are available as box toppers in your hobby formats. And then there are the commemorative World Series ring. There's actually relics and autos available. Those are available in Hobby and Jumbo, but some very good names in that auto checklist. And the 1986 All-Star Autos. You're going to find a lot of those in these boxes, but some very nice names, a very nice checklist there as well. And of course, the short print image variations, always popular in the flagship set for tops. And then, of course, the unique experience. Willy Wonka tickets that there will only be 25 of, but that will get you to an exclusive tops event. We also have parallels in the set. So let's cover off on those. We're going to start with the rainbow foil. You're going to get those in about one out of 10 um, hobby packs. There's the gold foils. You'll find those in one out of two packs in the jumbo format only. And then there's the blue Walmarts, the yellow Walgreens, the purple Myers. I believe there's also for Target, probably a green. Then, of course, there's the gold border numbered to 2021. The Vented Stock, numbered to 99. The Independence Day to 76. We have a Black, numbered to 70, which is available on Hobby and Jumbo only. A Platinum Anniversary to 70. You've got the Mother's Day Blue, the, uh, the Mother's Day Pink, and the Father's Day Blue. Those are both numbered to 50. The Memorial Day, numbered to 25. And then there's the Clear Variation. Every one of those is going to be numbered to 10 only. And there is only 100 of those cards. Not all 330 in the set have one. There's only 100. And you can only find them in hobby boxes. And then we have Printing Plates and 70th Anniversary Parallels. Each of those are going to be one of ones. So that is our Parallel Rainbow for Series 2. So let's cover off on the inserts. Lots of different inserts that there are in Series 2. So we have the 70 years of Topps Baseball. There are 70 cards in that set. Then we also have the 70 years of Topps Baseball Chrome. And those are basically the same thing, just in a Chrome variation. And you're only going to find those in the Jumbo Box Toppers. So that's going to be a difficult set to complete. 1986 Topps Baseball is back for Series 2. There's 50 cards in that subset with the parallel breakdown of blue, black, platinum, red, and gold. And then there are the 1986 Topps Baseball All-Stars. 50 cards in that set. Same parallel breakdown as in the other one, but that one's also going to have a lot of your retired stars, stuff like that. And then we have the 1986 Topps Baseball Chrome Silver Packs. Those are going to have 100 cards. The parallels will be, uh, be to be announced, but they'll probably be similar to what they were in Series 1. Our next inserts. We have the DH debuts. There's going to be 15 cards in that set with the parallel breakdown of blue, black, platinum, red, and gold. The Home Run Challenge code cards are going to be back 30 new subjects in that one. You can win cards by guessing the day the player hits the home run. Then for Target exclusively, there's a Juan Soto highlight subset that's got 30 cards in it and significant statistics returns for 2021. That was available, I believe it was 2019 and 2020, uh, but 25 cards in that set with the parallel breakdown as well that you can see on screen. And then we have the sketch cards. The artist list has not been announced yet. They will only be available in Hobby and Jumbo. And then the shaped sketch cards, which you can see over there on the right. Just a really cool card. Again, the artist list hasn't been announced, but you're only going to find them in Hobby and Jumbo Hobby boxes. We have more inserts. There's the Topps 1965 redo. There's going to be 50 cards in that set, and it is only available in retail. So we jump from 1952 over to 1965 for those into series two. We also have the redo Chrome 1965, 50 cards in that as well. Then we have the Tops Platinum Players die cuts returning uh, as a continuation from series one, 25 cards in that set, parallel breakdown of blue, black, platinum, red, and gold. 
and the Unique Experience tickets. Those are the Willy Wonka ones. 25 tickets available in lots and lots of bags. Then we finally have the 0 to 60, which you can see over on the right. There's 20 cards in that subset with the same parallel breakdown that most of the inserts have for Series 2. And they also have Relics in Topps Series 2. So with those, we can get the 1986 Topps Baseball Relics, 40 cards in that set, with a parallel breakdown of Black, Gold, Red, and Platinum. Again, only available in Hobby and Jumbo. In 19, we have the 1986 Topps Baseball All-Star Relics, 45 cards in that set with the same parallel breakdown. Then we also have the 2021 Rookie Card Patches. Those are There are 30 cards in that set available in Hobby and Jumbo only. And the parallels are going to be Platinum, Red, and Gold on that. You can see what those look like on the right. I believe those are going to be pretty popular even though they're a manufactured relic. We also have the Commemorative World Series Rings, another manufactured relic. 50 cards in that one, available in Hobby and Hobby Jumbo only, with the same parallel as the rookie card patches. Then we have the In the Name Relics. Very cool relics. You can see what they look like on the right. A big oversized uh, letter of the player's last name from their jersey you've got 60 cards in that set they are all one of ones however the players have multiple cards so for example with christian yelich there's actually six one of ones because you get the y the e the l the i the c and the h we also have major league materials these are going to be a lot of the relics that you find uh throughout uh opening packs there will be 45 cards in that subset and the parallel breakdown is black gold, red, and platinum. You're going to find those in hobby and jumbo only. Then we have the significant statistics relics. There's 20 cards in that set. They're all going to be numbered to 99. And then the parallel breakdown is just a red to 25 and a platinum one of one. And the tops 70th anniversary logo patch returns for series two, 25 cards in that set available in your retail blaster boxes. We also have autographed relics. So for those, we have a 2021 Topps Rookie Card Patch Auto, 29 cards in that set, each numbered to 10 or less. So very cool ones there. Um, we have the Commemorative World Series Rings Autos, 41 cards in that set, each numbered to 10 or less, only available in Hobby and Hobby Jumbo. And then the Major League Materials Auto Relics. You can see what those look like with the Fernando Tatis on the right. 50 cards in that set, each number to 50 or less with a red to 25 or less and platinum one of one parallel breakdown. Some more autographed relics. We've got the significant statistics auto relics, 15 cards in that set, number to 50 or less. Again, a red and platinum parallel breakdown. Top 70th anniversary logo patch auto cards, 15 cards in that set. Those are available in blaster boxes. And the very cool Tops Reverence Auto Patch, 51 cards in that set, each number to 10. And there are a red and platinum parallel versions of those as well. And then we go to the autographs. First, we have the 70 years of baseball autos. There are 70 cards in that set with the parallel breakdown of black, gold, red, and platinum. Then we have the 70 years of baseball dual autos, 20 cards in that set, each number to five. You can see what that looks like over there with Garrett Cole and Aaron Judge on the right. We also have the 70 years of tops baseball autos. Those are the inserts. Very cool auto checklist here. We've got 58 cards. They're each numbered to 10 or less. Very cool if you get one of those. There's also the 1986 Topps Baseball Autos. 71 cards in that set. These are probably the most common of the autos that you're going to find out of Series 2. A large parallel rainbow of black, gold, red, platinum. And we also have the 1986 Topps Baseball All-Star Autos. You can see what that looks like with Ronald Acuna Jr. over there on the right using the All-Star 86 design. Same parallel breakdown as in the regular 1986 auto ones but those will probably be the ones that you find most of when you're opening packs of series two 
Continuing on, we also have the 1986 Topps Baseball Chrome Silver Pack Autos. So those are going to have 80 cards. So the Silver Packs, you can pull autos out of those. Parallels are going to be to be determined. But just know those are only available in Hobby and Jumbo because you can only get Silver Packs in the Hobby and Jumbo format. Then we have the Cut Signatures. There are 40 cards in that set there, each one of one. If you pull one of those, it will be an awesome addition to your collection. Some very, very good names in that uh, checklist. And we also have the DH debuts. There's going to be 13 cards in that subset, and they will each be numbered to 10 or less. Then that Target subset, the Juan Soto Highlights one, there are autographed versions of those as well. 30 cards in that set, so a ton of Juan Soto autos we can pull out of Series 2. And continuing on with our autographs, we can also pull the Significant Statistics autos. 17 cards in that set, each numbered to 50 or less with a red and platinum parallel rainbow. There's also the Topps Platinum Player die cut autos. Those are a continuation from Series 1. We have 16 cards in that set. They're each going to be numbered to 10 or less. And you can see what those look like over there with Ricky Henderson on the right. And to round out our autographs, we have the 0 to 60 autos. Uh, those are numbered to 10. And there are 16 cards in that auto subset. So a lot to unpack there. A ton of different things that we can pull out of here. We've got cut signatures, short prints. Uh, we've got all sorts of different things, tons of different inserts. So what are the teams that you should be targeting in breaks? Well, I'm going to give you who I think are the ones that I would target, and I'll give you a couple sleepers, and we'll see where this all lands. So my first team is going to be what I believe is the best team that you can land in a break. It is going to be the Atlanta Braves. The Atlanta Braves have 12 base cards in the set, and two of those are going to be rookie cards. They have a large amount of inserts. There are 40 total inserts, and they have a ton of different autos you can pull out of here. Ronald Acuna Jr., some very big names, a lot of the retired Brave stars, 38 different autos you can pull, and 28 different relics. So the Braves are very well represented, and they have a strong, strong checklist. So check out the Atlanta Braves. But if you're looking for the most autos, that's going to be the New York Yankees. They've got 12 base cards and two rookie cards as well. 32 different inserts you can pull and an astounding 44 autos and you can get 25 relics. The Yankees are always good in a flagship set for tops. But another solid choice going to be the Los Angeles Dodgers. You've got 11 base cards. There's only one rookie card, but there are 30 inserts and 31 autos. They also have 28 relics, and a lot of those uh, autos and stuff are from the World Series team. So when you go look at that, the auto checklist, what you're going to find is that the, there's a lot of the current World Series team from 2020 that have done a bunch of different autos with the World Series commemorative ring stuff. So a very, very solid choice there with the Dodgers, especially if you're buying into the hobby format on breaks. But if you ask me what team is going to be holding the most value over time, I'm going to say the San Diego Padres. They've got 14 base cards. Four of those are rookie cards. They've got 29 different inserts that you can pull out of there and 24 autos and 17 relics. However, some of those rookies, you've got Jake Cronenworth. You've got Fernando Tatis autos. When you look at their team set checklist overall, a ton of value can be had in the San Diego Padres. I believe they're going to be an expensive team, but maybe not the most expensive team that you can get from Series 2. But if you land them in a random team break, I think you're going to be doing great. So the San Diego Padres, I believe that even long term that the Padres are going to hold a lot of value in this set. But if you don't have the money to spend on some of these top tier teams, I'm going to give you a couple sleepers. My first one, the Philadelphia Phillies. The Phillies got 13 base cards, so they're well represented in the base set. They've got four different rookie cards, so a lot of different rookie possibilities that we can find. They've also got 29 inserts and a ton of autos, 34 autos. They are one of the top teams for autos, but their team checklist looks a little short because they only have nine relics. 
And when you look at the autos, they are not short on stars at all. So the Philadelphia Phillies, I think they'll be kind of middle of the road. If you probably could find a way to trade for one in a random team break, kind of a sleeper team there, a good chance of getting some autos. So don't sleep on the Philadelphia Phillies. My other sleeper is going to be the Washington Nationals. They've only got seven cards in the base set, and I don't think they have a rookie. However, they do have 36 autos that you can pull out of the base set. And if you add in the target box autos for Juan Soto, you can add 30 more autos that you can actually pull. So technically, the Nationals have 60 six autos you can pull even if you take that out of it they have 36 autos and there are Juan Soto autos all over that checklist and that's got a ton of value so the Nationals I don't know that they're actually going to be a sleeper but the Nationals are a team that generally in breaks don't normally sell for that much in the last couple years so don't sleep on the Nationals if you can pull a trade for them in a random team break if you can land them on a pick your team for the right price especially if you're buying into some of those target boxes. Uh, You've got a decent chance at pulling a Juan Soto auto, so you're going to get your ROI right there immediately. And um, who knows, you may even pull some of the other Nationals autos that they have in there. So they've got a ton of them. There's 36. Don't sleep on the Nationals. So with Top Series 2, what are the overall set positives? In my opinion, I believe that Top Series 2 is Just like with all of the Topps flagship products, it's one of the most collectible sets, if not the most collectible set in the baseball card hobby. It's got the richest tradition. It's when people coming right back into the hobby, they go, when they think baseball cards, they think Topps. And so very collectible. And you've got a lot of the Topps first rookies, just a very collectible set, tons of appeal there. There's also plenty of rookie cards. I said 53. I don't know why I typed 53. It's actually 59. And then I believe that there's two of the stronger rookie cards in the 2021 rookie class in Cabrian Hayes and Jake Cronenworth. Those two cards, I believe long-term, could be the two rookies we're talking about five years from now is the best rookies from this baseball card season. Then it is one of the most fun sets to collect for set collectors. We're adding another 330 cards to the set. Like I said, people just getting back into the hobby, they're going to go, they're going to gravitate to a set like this. And longtime collectors, everyone likes the Topps flagship set if you collect the baseball cards. It's a fun set, tons of different things you can pull, tons of different cards. The short print image variations are always fun to chase. They're also for this particular series two set, a very good mix of rookies, current and retired players in the auto checklist. So when you look at the auto checklist, there's a ton of superstar veterans like Mike Trout, Miguel Cabrera, stuff like that. And you've got a ton of the rookie autos, obviously. And there's a lot of the retired stars and the retired star checklists have some really, really nice names in there as well. So I'm a big believer that the auto checklist has done very well for top series two in 2021. And finally, there's a strong secondary market for all of Topps flagship products. So when you buy into this, the return on investment tends to be there over time. It's maybe not, it's not as popular these days as Topps Chrome is, at least in a value sense, but Having that Topps flagship rookie card and having some of the autos that come out of here, some very, very nice cards for any collection and a strong secondary market because of that. But with all the positives, there's also some negatives. So let's dig into those. First, I am not a huge fan of some of the new insert sets. That 0-61 to 61, I, it's not going to hold value long term. Maybe some of the autos will, but some forgettable, and that's maybe the right word to say, some forgettable inserts that they added for Series 2. I just don't see them as very appealing. And the nostalgia that they kind of touched on in, 20, in Top Series 1 doesn't seem to be there as much in Series 2. The other thing. 
production run is going to be high on this set. It's available all over the place. Series one was produced a ton. I don't think it's going to be produced that much, but with the demand that they have and this being Topps flagship products, the, there's going to be a lot of Topps Series 2 in circulation here real quickly. Also, although the manufactured relics are better in Series 2 than they were in Series 1, I do like that rookie card uh, patch that they've done. It's still a manufactured auto, and they still count it as a hit. It's ridiculous that a manufactured auto counts as a hit in a hobby box that costs, or a hobby jumbo box that costs more than $200. I'm not a big fan of it. Not to say that I don't like them, but those do not hold the same weight as a game used jersey or an auto or something like that. I just believe that the manufactured relics are a cheap way of saying, hey, there's another hit in this box. Finally, the quality control has to improve in series two. There were too many packs that were opened in series one with miscut especially on the parallels which is what people are chasing and i have mentioned this with tops and i'm going to keep harping on it until i see a set that actually looks cut well and with good quality control i get that there has been some production issues and stuff but that should not sacrifice with the amount that cards cost right now the quality control element from tops they need to do a better job with centering and cutting. And when they're on press, they need someone actually sitting there making sure these cards are coming off right. And I don't believe that that is happening right now. So get your act together, Tops, and get better quality control and make sure, especially on these parallels that we and some of the inserts, that we don't have massively miscut cards. Until it's fixed, I'm going to keep harping on it with Tops. And we also have a high cost for a guaranteed auto. It's costing about 230 bucks for a jumbo box right now. And that is the only format which guarantees an auto and you only get one. So a $230 auto from a jumbo box. Now, granted, you get a lot of other different cards in a jumbo box, but that's pretty high for a guaranteed auto out of a flagship set. So that brings us to the one cent sensational set ranking. How does 2021 tops break down this year well we're going to put it on the one to five star scale and here's how it breaks down our categories first category is appeal i don't think there's a set that appeals to card collectors more in the baseball card hobby than tops's flagship set i'm going to give it a 10 everyone chases these cards um, everyone set collectors do it flippers do it investors do it um team set collectors do it individual collectors do it rookie cards everyone collects the flagship so i think the appeal is off the charts i give it i give it a 10 the base set checklist i love that they got a lot of the rookies in there i believe it is a fairly strong checklist i think two of the bigger rookies from 2020 are going to live in series two in hayes and cronenworth um, and when you look at all of the other cards that aren't rookies, a very, very nice selection that they had very well rounded to represent the teams, the 30 teams in baseball. So I'll go ahead and give that a 7.5 for the inserts and the relics. I think the relics improved over series one and they're not bad. Um, however, some of the inserts are a little bit underwhelming. So I gave it a seven. I almost went six on that, but I'll go ahead and give it a seven. For the parallels and variations, I love the image variations. It's one of my favorite parts about Topps flagship. Uh, there's a very nice parallel rainbow. It's one that we've kind of gotten to know over the years. They've added a few things for the 70th anniversary. So I give that an 8.5. The auto checklist, there's a little bit of filler. There's always going to be in a flagship release. But overall, a very nice mix of rookies, of current greats and retired stars. I give that a 7.5. For packed odds and production, I went ahead and gave it a five. It's not going to be produced as much as series one, but it's still going to be produced a lot. The pack odds are fairly long. Um, I could have gone lower on this, but it is series two, and I don't think they're going to make quite as much as series one. So I went with five for card quality. I, 
I don't mind the 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 cardboard that is being used right now for tops. However, I'm only giving it a five, and really it probably should have got a four. I will reserve judgment until I see cards coming out of the pack. But until I see a lot of parallels that are cut nice and clean, I'm not going any higher than a five on a tops product right now. For historical value, flagship always holds value. Uh, it doesn't hold quite the value that it normally does, but that could correct itself in the years to come. So for historical value, I'm going to go 7.5. And for the artistic value, I actually do like uh, some of the relics that they have put in here um, and some of the ways that they have uh, designed for the autographs. But I am not a big fan of the 2021 design, so I'm only giving it a 6 there. And then for cost value, I'm going to give it a 5.5. I still believe costs are inflated because of the popularity and demand for the product. I don't think that hobby boxes that don't guarantee an auto should be going for over $100. And I don't believe that jumbo boxes that only give you one auto should be going for over $200. That said, you do get a nice ROI on most of the boxes if you're looking to invest in kind of sell some of the cards that come out of the box. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a 5.5. So when we add all of those up, where does Tops Baseball Series 2 2021 land on the one cent sensational set ranking? Well, its final rating is a 69.5. So again, another middle of the road, four star set. It is a very solid set. A lot of things that you're going to chase in this. A lot of nice rookies. Um, not as many pitchers that we saw in Series 1. However, there is a little filler, as there always is with the flagship set. And there are some weaknesses, and we're maybe a little bit expensive, which has been kind of the tune throughout 2021. So how does that rank up against the 2020 Top Series 2 set? which had the Luis Robert rookie in it. Well, 2020, shockingly, also got a 69.5. However, things were kind of different in the breakdown. The cost value was a little bit better last year. Uh, the artistic value was a little bit last year, a little bit better last year, but I did bring the base set checklist a little lower last year. All things being equal, everything still equals 69.5. So how does Top Series 2 rank with all of the series to date? Well, it lands fourth out of 16 possible sets. So it is not quite as good as Top Series 1. Top Series 1 eked out at 70.5. So Top Series 1 just a hair uh, better in my opinion. Uh, our top three still uh, leading the way is still Bowman. We have Top Series 1 after that, and then Top's Inception. Top's Tribute and Top's Finest kind of round out that top five and six. Don Russ, sad to see it fall out of the top 10, but it did because Top Sterling took over that 10 spot here in the last couple days. So as we continue on down the road of the card collecting season for 2021, we're starting to see Tops take over a little bit. The only Panini product that we have in there is Panini Diamond Kings at 64.5. There are a few that are hanging out right outside of the top 10, but, to, but Panini's big hitters are coming up here a little later this month, so watch for those set reviews. So with that, guys, again, be sure, throw over to first, hit that like button for me if you like these videos. That's the best way you can support the channel. Comment below, let me know what you think about top series two and be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can get all of the set reviews that we're going to be doing throughout the 2021 season so with that guys i hope you have great luck on your tops series two pack pulls and i hope you are being good to your family to your friends and to your neighbors and until next time take care